to, I, I think there has to be a willingness to continue to reevaluate where we are at in our spirituality and keep growing. In fact, one of the things that really co- convicted me was the fact that I saw that even in Pastor Henry when he was here, was that he kept going in his journey. He didn't stop because he thought he had it all. But there's a, see, but there's a danger, danger. If I think I know everything, then at that point, I'm stuck with my level of ignorance. What I don't know, I can't learn because I know it all. But if I give leeway to the fact that I might not know things as I ought to know them, then I give myself the potential to grow and learn. So, you know, I, I have this, these Ezekiel scriptures, and I, 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 don't, I don't really want to read the whole thing. But I, I, and you don't need to turn there with me, but I like Ezekiel 18, and I, I would give that as homework to you. You know, you should, uh, this is a great chapter, just read anyway, because it's a great reminder of the fact that God is not out there with a, well, you know what, I think I will read it, because there, there is a nuance to this in this conversation that I want to bring out. Ezekiel 18, 26. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies in them, for his iniquity that he has done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul. Because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet, says the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Now here's what I'll say. I think that we we want the tables to be turned depending on who's the righteous and who's the unrighteous. Right? That if we're doing things that are wrong, we want God to be plenteous in mercy. If our neighbor is doing something wrong, we want God to strike them down tomorrow. I'm not saying we do, but Maybe we've gone there before. But the reality is, and this is hard, and even in these days, because maybe we've said things and thought things about why aren't these people gone? Why are these people still here? We have to trust God that, there, that there's a purpose to all of this. Pray for everyone, but recognize his scales are just. They just are. And it's not for me to even try to determine it. That's a challenge. Because he's saying right here, there's a reason why. There's a reason why what is is what is. That he knows. He knows where the ledgers are at. He knows what's really going on. See, but this is part of the point too, is that maybe it's time for us to say, be honest with ourselves before God and say, you know what? In these areas, I'm in the unrighteous column. Maybe in this, these areas, I'm starting to move into the righteous column. Maybe I'm overcoming in some of these areas. But can, instead of trying to point the finger at others about where they're landing in this, can we, this is that plowing, can we look at our own life in that, with those, that perspective? See, that, you're going to find a cornucopia of uh, various things that need to be dealt with when you just start asking the question, God, how do you want me to serve you? You know, you don't have to navel gaze. Just go out and try to represent God. And if you're going to try to represent God with the right heart, you're going to see all kinds of evil stuff come out of you. See, it, it, that's the easiest way to figure out what sins are in your life. Try to serve God and see what, if you're like, oh, I hate this thing. And, oh, there's a sin because I'm trying to work, walk with God. Oh, I'm trying to love this person, but they just, ah, there you go. That's the sin issue, right? I'm in this situation, but I just, oh, I don't want to do this. I, 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 this is too much for me. Well, why? If God has called you to it, why would it be too much? Did he say it's too much? See, but here's where I also want to go with this. Verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. 
so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Now this is the challenge in all this. Because this is where we get out of legalism territory of doing, doing, doing into the nitty-gritty of what the Scripture really wants. And this is something we have to ask God for. Created me a new heart and a new spirit. We can't do this for ourselves. There has to be a vulnerability about this that we just say, I can't do this. I'm not going to do it. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Father, about what's, what's wrong in my life, but I can't manufacture this. I'm not going to create a religious system, the 10 rules to a right heart before God, and then feel like I checked off all 10. Now I'm good with you. I have to go to you and say, this is something that I'm going to need you to join me in so I can get to that place. And this is what's so important. This is where I was going is verse 32. And this is very, very important. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. See, this is the perspective that God, the Father wants for our life. He wants us to live. He wants us to be alive. You know, and dare I say, there is a distinction there. There are many people who are surviving in the world, but they're not living. To be alive is not just to have breath. It's really to know who you're serving. And establish a firm foundation in your life. And a commitment to just going forward with them. Whatever that looks like. As I was talking, about, talking to somebody about today, that may look like resting for a season. For some people, it's difficult to rest. Take their peace. For others, it might be to get off their butt and do something. But see, this is where this is not a rule. This is about what is, a, what is a right and wrong spirit in our life. For one person, their wrong spirit is they do nothing. The other person's wrong spirit is they're always doing something to stay busy rather than taking a moment here from God. See, this is why this is not about rules. This is about going to him and saying, what are the weak points in my character, God, Father? Show it to me. And allowing him to take us to scripture to start to renew those parts of our life. 